here, Denny. This is our quarterly uh, stats podcast. We like stats. Hope you guys do, do too. But uh, what's going on in Greater Vancouver real estate year to date, 2024? We're now at uh, the past the middle of April. And so we'll share some sales volume, number of listings currently, sales ratios throughout Greater Vancouver for year to date and for the last month, which was March. Denny, the sun's out. The gardens are coming in. I know. The listings are coming. People's homes are looking beautiful. That's why we have to do this update. But what's activity, Denny? <laughs> well, depends, Denny. It depends. <laughs> if you have a, a luxury condo, it's not doing so hot. It's not that good. No. <laughs> if you have a $10 million <laughs> condo in the Burbs, not that they exist. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is this is prime real estate time. And uh, April is the start of what I always say is once spring breaks out, you start seeing a big uptick, particularly with families and single family homes. Condos can, you know, like a yellow tone condo, that, that is not as seasonal, but everything in real estate gets busier April, May, June in a typical year. And uh, let's kind of sum up what we're seeing and where we think this market is going and what's hot, what's not. And uh, yeah, let's look at some of the data. So I think the big headline that came out from the real estate board on the last stat release package was that buyers have more options than ever and not more than ever, but by the supply of listings has increased uh, quite a bit in the month of March. Um, we are over the 10 year average, uh, which we, you know, all of last year and for a while there before listing supply was under the 10 year average <clears throat> and year over year we're, we're March listings were up. I just just under twenty three percent from the last March. From last so just year. all in all, more selection for buyers, um, more listings. Which, when more listings hit, they tend to follow with more sales after. So the sales data for March was still under the ten year average. So sales are still lagging in terms of numbers of sales, but I imagine the number of sales will start picking up as listings pick up. Jenny, where do we want to start with this? I think the other thing I'll announce is like rates are still high. And one of the comments that we've seen and what was released from the board was that we're still seeing prices trickle up. One, the board said 1% to 2% a month. And I think that's pretty accurate. You know, if I look at an apples to apples property, call it whether it's a 1950s bungalow home or a two bedroom condo, if it's sold in <laughs> November and it's sold today, I think the difference in price in a lot of cases is around 10%. You know, maybe, maybe five to 10. Um, but November was not a great time and more people have shown up today. So let's call it in the neighborhood, just your typical property that is selling right now, normal first time buyer, one bedroom or two bedroom or townhouse or house, um, probably up in the neighborhood of five to 10% since the bottom of the fall. Would you think, what, what do you think? Do you think that's kind of the neighborhood? Yeah, I think that's pretty accurate. It is yeah. difficult to compare exact properties because it seemed like one, the inventory is very low in the fall. And two, it wasn't the best homes on the best streets that no. were listing and selling. It's so trying to trying to compare in different markets is sure um, helps with education a little bit, but it also is uh, it's not one hundred percent accurate based on property types. I, I'd say it seems like this year people with the better homes on better streets, even though maybe you know updates are similar, are listing versus last fall. It was kind of like low quality inventory yeah yeah with a few exceptions that yeah. always trickle through we do you want to get into the last 30 days of sales or where do you want to let's talk new s yeah. specifically we just okay. uh put a flyer together in new west and all this stuff is right at the top of your mind yeah, new westminster look out the flyer's <laughs> coming <laughs> yeah uh when with new s kind of looked at the year not just the last 30 days it was like year to date and you know the for condos new s is a big condo market so the the stats month over month are you know, give us a good picture, but for houses, there's not many of them. So in month over month, they can be skewed statistics, but I'm, I'm going to give you the highlights. So like the, the average and median and average are pretty close, but the average house sale year to date in New West has been 1.601 million. So mm -hmm. let's call it 1.6 million with the low being 925 and the high being 2.68. Average uh, list price to sale price was 98.9%, which I think this kind of reflects you know, 1.6 million, pretty hot price point for single family homes. Yeah. You know, if you look at Coquitlam, you look at Port Coquitlam, uh, other comparable suburb markets, I bet you it's a very, you know, similar story. You know, they're, they, they tend to move alike. Uh, townhouses, the average sale price for townhouse in New West was 956,000 year to date. The average sale price to list price ratio was 100 100%, 100.7%. 100 
So on average, almost 1% above list price was the average sale. So a lot of multiple offers, a lot of quick sales. And condos, uh, average condo price year to date, 652,900. Uh, 652, uh, on average, the sale price to list price ratio is 99.2%. So what this tells us as a whole is that, you know, houses, call it condos, 99% of list, townhouses, 101% of list. Those are just rough and dirty numbers. That's more of a seller's market, or no, that's more of a seller's market than a buyer's market, Danny. Yeah, in both. And even looking specifically at March, <clears throat> con- new S condos were one of the front runners in terms of sales ratios. There was 72 sales in March 2024 compared to 203 listings. That is a 35% sales ratio. That is mm-hmm. definitely a seller's market. So just to <clears throat> talk on that, let's call it one out of three listings are selling in a given month. The real estate board says once the sales ratio is over 20%, you start seeing upward pressure on prices and more of a seller's market. Yeah. So uh, that's what New West is experiencing right mm-hmm. now. And the interesting thing about March for New West houses is compared to last year, last year, March, there was nine sales. This year, March, 17. So basically double. Uh, sales ratio, 22%. 17 sales, 77 listings. And that is not a super accurate statistic because New West right now is filled with overpriced land assembly listings. So <laughs> yeah, on, honestly, yeah. I would say at least 25% of that 77 is high priced three, $4 million properties that are potentially going to be land assembled. Causes confusion to buyers. It does. Why is this house $2.5 million yeah. when <laughs> it's old and yeah. run down? Yeah. Uh, there, yeah, there's a lot of overpriced product. Um, I looked at the last 30 days, 30 days of sales for houses in New West, Coquitlam, and Port Moody as a whole. Mm-hmm. Okay, so uh, Port Moody, a bit of a hot spot, a little higher average price point. Coquitlam, I think, has got a wide range of price points. But the, the, uh, in, the, in the last 30 days across those three markets, the average sale price was $2 million, 3000 but Let's just call it $2 million. Yep. A $2 million house was the average sale price that that happened in the last 30 days and the average list price to sale price ratio was 100%. So on average the listing sold for 100% of their list price and $2 million was the average sale price. And just to paint the picture of what a $2 million house is. If you're in Coquitlam, up Heritage up Westwood Plateau, it might be a 4,000 square foot dated, dated 80s or 90s built home. If you're in Port Moody on Heritage Mountain, that might be a 2500 to to 2800 square foot 80s home with some renovations if you're in new s i mean any house that's older with nice renovations call it around 2500 square feet and a good lot yeah um renovations are needed for an older home to get it to two million dollars new west or it's a very poorly built newer home (laughs) (laughs) so uh but a two million dollar home isn't necessarily a luxury property but it is a nice quality family home Mm -hmm. uh and then i will also mention that the uh, and more woke up a little bit this year, you know, and more is known for having luxury listings that sit, but and more had four sales this year, over $3 million. And, uh, but it currently has 11 listings over $3 million. So it, as a sales ratio, it's still, you know, more of a buyer's market in and more. Uh, but, uh, we've, we've been a little hard on and more in past years because they have some ambitious price points up there with few sales. They, uh, one of the highest sales in the suburbs year to date was in and more this year, over 4 million. Uh, so and more, Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> I got a hot spot and a low spot to talk yeah. about. Which one would you like to hear first? You know, uh, before you talk about yours, I'll also mention the highest suburb sale year to date was in North Burnaby. Nice custom built house in Vancouver Heights. Sold for 4.3 million. This is a 3,500 square foot home on a 6,100 square foot lot. Just a well-built home. Nice design. 4.3 million. Go ahead. Hot or low? Let's go low. Okay, low. low. It's not hot. <laughs> low. So Yaletown overall, not super busy. So kind of isolated the different product types. And when you look at under a million in Yaletown, quite active. 20 sales in March for 93 listings. That is a 21% sales ratio. And the average condo is selling 102% of list price. So under a million, pretty active in, in Yaletown. But two bedroom condos in Yaletown are a different story. Nine sales in March, 136 listings. That's a 6.6% sales ratio. The ones that are selling, though, are selling for 100% of list price. It's just not many are selling. So there's a lot of inventory sitting in 
Yale Town two bedroom condos at the moment. I'm guess I didn't look at that data, but I'm guessing there's some high price per square foot listings yes. in there. Some new buildings that closed at, and a lot of listings at ridiculously high prices that are probably not selling. Well, like not ridiculously high prices, but let's call it the pre-sale condo buyer yeah. that closed on the new luxury condo is struggling to get what would it be 1600 a foot or <laughs> depending on the development honestly even higher yeah. in some there's yeah. that grosner yeah. building called pacific i believe mm -hmm. that is is high it's like in the two thousand dollar range yeah. foot yeah so those ones are struggling right now yeah yeah a uh, hot spot that i found is maple ridge townhomes we've talked a lot about maple ridge townhomes <laughs> in the last year a lot of people continuing to move east for more space with higher interest rates but in march 53 sales for 107 listings, that's just shy of 50% sales ratio. That's a lot of data too. That's a lot of listings and it a lot is. of sales. 53 yep. sales, yeah. And the average uh, sale price is 102%. Average uh, medium price point for a Maple Ridge townhouse, $820,000. 820? Yeah. 820. Yeah. So I think even though this is a hot spot, Maple Ridge, townhouses as a whole, yeah, almost anywhere are pretty hot. Mm -hmm. You know, there's not enough family homes out there. That's why we need those small scale multi unit zoning. <laughs> it's coming. It's, it's coming. coming. It's yeah. coming. Uh, sorry, I'll, I'll touch on a few things too. Uh, you know, I, I, I looked at North Van uh, under like two bedrooms under a million. Pretty, pretty, pretty active. You know, uh, the, the last 30 days, approximate sales ratio is 40%. So there, you know, there's the North Van two bedroom market under a million, quite active. North Burnaby, I was shocked at how many listings. Two bedroom listings there were under a million in North Burnaby. There's 252 listings under a million, but the they they still do sell, but the sales ratio is a little bit uh, a little bit lower. It's approximately call it 20 to 22 percent somewhere okay. in that range. Uh, reason why there's a lot of listings in North Burnaby, Brentwood. I mean, there's also University up at SFU, um, but there's just a lot of product with new developments and a lot of expensive product too. A lot of high price points, mm -hmm. or sorry, a lot of high price per square foot. Price per yeah. square foot. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I took a look at uh, New West Condo Port Moody one bedrooms in the last 30 days. And uh, there was a, there's currently 100, and, well, sorry, New West Coquitlam Port Moody one bedrooms between five hundred dollars and $700,000. A okay. pretty common price point for something that's called built within the last 20 years. Um, 136 active listings right now. And uh, the sales ratio in the last 30 days is about 35%. So stronger seller's market. That one out of three of those listings are selling in a given month. Um, to give you to paint that, the, the, I gave an award to the highest price per square foot sale in the in the suburbs. Steady, guess where it was out of Port Moody, New West, and Coquitlam. Price per foot. New. What's your stab on neighborhood? New construction. Uh, up around North Road. Oh, you were right. It was Coquitlam West. Nice. Okay. Now, second question, Jenny. What was the highest price per square foot of a one bedroom sold in the last 30 days? Poor Moody Grand. Well, look, sorry. Like I, I, like $1,000 a foot. Oh, a dollar foot, volume? Dollar. Uh, say 1175 oh, 1298 Whoa, that's high. Yeah, 1298 So uh, Coquitlam West, a 523 square foot, one bedroom sold for 678 which works out to 1298 a square foot. That was the highest price per square foot sale for a one bedroom condo in the last 30 days. Um, I mean, it's a high price per square foot, but that, I mean, that condo is an efficient floor plan at 523 square feet. So when you have a smaller floor plan, usually it's a higher price per foot. 1300. It's a lot though. It's a lot though. I mean, that's similar to what I've seen offered in pre-sale condos for new construction in Brentwood and East Vancouver. And Metrotown. Yeah. 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 But it must be a good one. So, what would you be your take but based on the sales you've seen, the data you're looking at? What do you expect to see ahead? What do you think the next few months are going to look like? I'm hope I know we're getting above 10 year average for inventory. I'd say the amount of good inventory, like we kind of talked about in New West houses, is still sluggish. Like being very active with buyers right now, it's a bit frustrating when there's one or two places that they want to see every week, or, or in a lot of cases, zero. I hope there's more uh, good single family, entry level single family coming up. Uh, my guess is this spring is sluggish for sales. I don't think we're going to see that big run of activity that we often see May, June. 
for uh, buyers, I think a lot of people are still hesitant based on interest rates. And maybe a June drop will help that slightly. But I think this spring, comparatively to active years, is going to be sluggish. Yeah, I, I think that's last year. We should refresh our memory a little bit. This time last year felt pretty hot. Yeah. You know, uh, March was quite active. And then we got our summer lull and fall, there was a lot of negativity and the market slowed quite a bit. So I think the summer lull has been a theme over the last few years, that July, August, things just slow. Yeah. I could see that happening again this year. I just think the difference this year is my guess is the fall is going to be busier. And it, I say that because last fall was so slow. <laughs> you know, so it's a low bar to achieve. But um, yeah, I, I think we were all optimistic that the market would be busier than it is by now and that rates would start being coming down by now. It's just weird times. It's weird times. Yeah. It, it's, it's hit or miss, as we've said a lot this year. It's yeah, so, uh, something I say in almost every listing appointment yeah. is like, list price strategy is, it's so price dependent how active you're going to be. Yeah. If you list competitively with sales, <clears throat> meaning at or slightly below if you've purchased and need to, need to sell, a lot of those listings are super active and get multiples and sell in a week, a lot of them. Mm. Versus if you're listing slightly on the high side, it is in a lot of cases very slow and very difficult to even re- receive an offer. We've got a few of those at the moment, but it, it's like, it's so price dependent and it's, it's funny going through different um, markets over the years, watching like higher, let's say listing on the high side, a lot of them will still sell, be active, get a, get an offer below list price versus this year. It feels just like listing slightly high is not necessarily a strategy that's going to help you sell in the first 30 days. With a few exceptions, yeah, you know, a few circumstances, you know, if you're, if you're selling first, then buying, and this is a whole equation and you need a certain amount of money to make the equation make sense, mm-hmm. you can list high and yeah. see what happens. But yeah, if you're, there's a, there's a reason why there's a lot of listings sitting on the market right now. And uh, there's a reason why in a seller's market, one out of four, just one out of four listings sell. And that's considered a seller's market. It's because mm-hmm. three out of four ambitious. Yeah. Um, what do you think would be a, co- a couple examples of a confident uh, multiple offer listing right now? Like a listing that if you were to bring it to the market today, that you would put in that irrevocable direction on presentation of offers for an, a set offer date because you're confident that it's going to get a few. Say a couple. One would be townhouse in the su- suburbs, tri-cities that is in a good complex, newer, priced correctly. Uh, another would be a unique condo in the suburbs, meaning either big patio, third bedroom, uh, really good location. There's one specifically in New Aston that listed last week. And in this complex, there's maybe 10 or 12 units that have, that are top floor, big patios, three bedrooms. And that listed, honestly, to me, what I thought was like very market value number. Mm -hmm. And it was crazy busy, had four offers and sold well over list price. The other is home on a good street with some renos. That is kind of like what is probably the busiest at the moment. Yeah, to kind of add to that home on a good street with renos, I've observed a house in Coquitlam that was priced at 1649, get eight offers. Good street, not a great home, decent home, 2,200 square feet, but on a really good lot and a good street. Yeah. And in that hotspot. So like, and a few other examples that, you know, our house in New West on Nanaimo Street got multiple offers. So all in all, like if you have a detached home in a suburb market like New West Coquitlam and your price and your true value of your homes between one four and one eight, and you have a good street or a good layout or, or more positive features than negative features in your home, it's likely going to get multiple offers. Yeah. Um, even, even above one eight in a lot of, you know, say Port Moody and a lot of good neighborhoods like Queens Park, it would potentially get multiple offers. Uh, I've seen a one bedroom or a couple one bedrooms in the new West key that front right on the river get multiple offers. So I know a good one bedroom that has a nice outlook and stares at water is pretty attractive. And like you said, townhouse is a good townhouse. There's not enough family housing. So those, those get multiple offers too. What do you think uh, is the product that will be good in a few years that right now is struggling? Land value. Hundred percent. Land value is tough right now. There's a lot of pressure on density there, and if you go back to more optim, like 
2017, other, or even 2021, there was a lot of appetite for land value. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of people hungry for it because they wanted to add value to land and, 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 and develop real estate. Right now, it's most, most developers and builders are, are sitting on product. They, they're not buying or the ones that are buying are waiting for a really good deal. So it is a bit of a struggle. And I, I think that the luxury condo will pick up in a few years, mm-hmm. but I don't think it'll, like, I think it'll be a while before these penthouses all over town that are $2 million and these uh, even high-end two bedrooms that are, you know, let's call it the 40th floor of amazing Brentwood. That's <laughs> uh, not a penthouse, um, but has a, a high price per foot. I think it's going to be a while before those become you know, multiple offer products. Like I just, I, I don't see the demand for 2 million plus penthouse these days. And that will change one day with an aging population, but it's not there yet. There's more and more of them too, right? Yeah. There's a more supply of that kind of stuff. What there's a low supply of that I've seen has been pretty busy in the last couple of months is larger, older condos in those good neighborhoods like Brentwood, like close to Metrotown. The 1100, 1200, you know, some areas of South Burnaby, 1,400 square foot, three bedroom condo that is just under a million bucks. So a lot lower price per square foot than this new stuff that is smaller. Those have been really active and a lot of them getting multiple offers. The conversations you're having with clients right now, buy first versus sell first. We listed a few of the hot products. So if you're in one of those categories of hot products, I think you could more likely do the buy first than sell your hot product. Mm-hmm. But what are the conversations you're having right now with clients trying to analyze, do I buy first or sell first right now? I think the, f- the first thing is how available is what you're looking for versus what you're trying to sell. Mm-hmm. If you're trying to sell a two-bedroom Yaletown condo right now, it, it, it's difficult to justify purchasing first if you need that to sell in the next 30 days because there's a lot on the market and there's only, there was only nine sales last month. If you're selling a unique waterfront one bedroom condo in new s like you just mentioned a few of those have got multiple offers recently uh so and you're maybe upsizing to a more unique home that doesn't come up three times a week there's probably a justification there to purchase wait to purchase and list your home right away and at a competitive price i think uh, like an easy one if you're sitting on a deep, if you're downsizing you're sitting on a 1.6 million dollar house in coquitlam yeah and you're buying a higher end condo that's an easy wait for that right condo to come up, then sell your place because mm-hmm. it's pretty predictable right now. Um, same for townhouse. You know, a lot of townhouses are pretty predictable. But a lot of conversations I'm having right now are, you know, it's April. Well, mm-hmm. it's later April right now. Maybe it's May by the time you're listening to this, but even May, I think that qualifies. If there's a time to sell first, it is now. And I say that because if you sell first in an April or May, it puts you in a buying position in June or July. And that's when there's great selection. Uh, ignore deals. Let's focus on selection. Yeah. And if you're a typical family or person that's going to live in this place, you want selection. So the argument to sell first is so that you know how much money you have so that you can put a better offer forward when that right property comes up and you're, you're putting yourself in a buying position at a time where there's a lot of options. Yeah. The reason not to sell first is, um, well, if you bought first, you might take, you know, you might just have to be prepared to take a lower price on your sale. So uh, when the conversations I have is, if you buy first, you just have to be prepared for a likely worst case scenario sale price. So even though, you know, if we want to get a million dollars for your place, you have to be okay with 950 or 900 because we're going to buy before you know the sale price. Yeah. And our hope is to get a million fifty, but you got to buy this house. If you're, if you're buying first, you got to be willing to do it based on a lower number. If you're looking to upsize or downsize this year, Jamie, and you're confused about the buy sell process, which to do first? Where are you going for information? Oh, I would say Denny Duma. You know, I mean, that's <laughs> hands down. Where I, I, when I'm puzzled, I reach out to Denny Duma. <laughs> Sometimes I stare in the mirror and ask James Garvey. But <laughs> uh, we'd love to help you. This is an equation that cannot be generalized. We got to evaluate your specific situation. Look mm-hmm. at how sellable your property is and how probable or likely it is to find you one that's suitable. Um, it, yeah, it depends on the buy. It depends on the sale. These are conversations we have all the time and they're very specific to individual situations based on what you're looking for, what you're selling, but also timelines and schools and like all, there's so many things that kind of go into this equation. So they need to be specific. They need to be, you know, more than a th- three minute yep. section of a podcast, but 
Can I add one more little prediction to the end of this? Let's hear what it. do you think, call it townhouse, condo, or house, yep. the generic product that we've been talking about, like not a luxury home, like yep. call it a one six home or a one one townhouse or one two townhouse. What do you think a one two townhouse that sells today for one two yep. is going to sell for in November? Or house or condo? Do you think it's going to be higher, <laughs> lower, the same? I think in November of this year, November, it's going to be five to seven percent higher. Okay. Yeah. In the spring of 2025, I think it's going to be ten to fifteen percent higher than today. Do you think there's going to be a lull, a, a like a backtrack in prices? No. No. Okay. I think we saw that last fall, and I think all suggestions from people that are smarter than us talking about <laughs> rates and economic factors going on in Canada at the moment point to easing of interest rates. It's just a matter of time, whether that is in June or August or the fall, I don't know. But when that starts happening, I, I don't see there being a backtrack in prices for the foreseeable future. I 100% agree with you, Denny. And uh, by 100%, I think we're 50% accurate with our predictions if we look <laughs> at the past. So don't follow these because of that. It's been weird times in Vancouver real estate, but I, I, I do think that, that it does make a lot of sense. Um, we'll see. We'll see. Maybe we'll be right on this one, but don't look back at our old ones. I mean, part of the reason that we're even confident in these predictions is because we are seeing it already this spring is like the good unique properties are selling at or above peak pricing from 20 march 2022 let's say and it, it feels like those unique really good ones are are catching a bit of a wave and that's often what brings the other stuff with it right mm -hmm. that unique one bedroom facing the water sets a new record sale price in the complex guess what the one next door that has the partial view it's kind of getting caught up to it. So all in all, we think the tail end of this year is going to be stronger than last year. And prices are going to be more expensive in the future than today. I think so. We'll see if we're right. We'll see. Leave it at that. <laughs>